So I went ahead and yo-ho yo-ho'd myself Raya and the Last Dragon, the latest CGI Princess Blandness Fest from Disney. The entire experience constituted of three simple words. What? How? And why? How come, you may ask? Well, join me, dear viewer, and I'll tell you. So there's these five tribes who live with dragons, in a land that is literally shaped like a dragon. That's like something written by a kid for their first Avatar The Last Airbender fairy tale crossover fanfic. But whatever. Everyone lives in rural harmony until these evil fart clouds appear. They have no personality, no voice, no explained motivation. They are just pure hateful entities. Sure, writing for kids at its finest. So the humans and dragons fight the fart clouds, but they suck, and the clouds use hacks, turning everyone into stone, dragons and humans alike. But then the dragons suddenly create this dragon ball thing that just absolutely nukes the fart clouds. Somehow. Why didn't the dragons just use the dragon ball thing right from the beginning? It's quite powerful after all. Never explained. So, in addition to killing the fart clouds, the Dragon Ball also brings back all the humans who were turned to stone. But not the dragons, they are all dead. Except for the last dragon, who just disappears after the battle. Why? How? Never explained. And after the dragons are all gone, all the humans start fighting over the Dragon Ball. And so this one tribe decides to hog it for themselves and shove it inside some dingy cave. To protect it. The implication is that everyone else is too stupid and power hungry to be allowed to have the Dragon Ball. But this one tribe is totally smart and knows not to do anything with the Dragon Ball except keep it at a pedestal. Okay, one tribe good, everyone else dumb, sure. This all happens 500 years before the main story begins. The time frame will become important, or rather confusing, in a little bit. But for now, let's continue with the immediate stuff. So the titular Raya is a girl from the Dragon Ball Protector tribe. Her father, the chief, is training her to become the next protector of the Dragon Ball, by making her break inside the vault where they are keeping it. That's kinda backwards, isn't it? Shouldn't Raya be training how to keep others out of the vault, rather than going all Ocean's Eleven herself? Anyway... So there's this giant stone door protecting the Dragon Ball vault, and it's opened by shoving a stick inside a hole in the wall and turning it. I'll say that again. The door to the all-important legendary treasure is opened with a stick. Not a key, just a stick. And not only that, but the vault also has this huge hole in the ceiling. I guess so that moody moonlight can seep in. Again, there is a hole in the ceiling of the vault that holds the Dragon Ball that you are trying to protect at all costs. The security of this artifact is literally your only job. And you've kept it here for the last 500 years. Fuck me. If you are this stupid, then you deserve to fail spectacularly. And speaking of which... Raya's father invites all the other tribes for a meetup, so that all of them could be friends again. See, the guy has this serious hard on for unity and harmony and rainbows and unicorns and all that mushy stuff. And it honestly makes this grown ass man look like a naive child. If these people have viciously hated each other for literal centuries, then just inviting them over for some rice and tea isn't gonna change much. Especially seeing as the other tribe's beef with you is the fact that you are hogging the dragon ball for yourself. You see, the tribes without balls believe that the Dragon Ball's magic is what makes the surrounding land flourish. The ball hoarders seem to be doing fine, while everyone else lives in barren lands. The chieftain says that it is nonsense. But if that's the case, then why not circle the Dragon Ball around to each tribe for a little while, show to everyone that it is indeed nonsense, and everyone can stop being butthurt? You know, maybe, just maybe, Maybe everyone would finally get off their fat asses and start actually farming the lands instead. But that would make sense, so moving on. As you might guess, the chieftain's only argument to unite the tribes boils down to Come on! Come on! So amidst the summit, Raya makes nice with the daughter of another chieftain. Can't be arsed to remember her name. 
Her mom kinda looks like Korra from Mass Effect Andromeda, so I'll go with that. So the mingling between Raya and the Korra spawn is painfully bland. It makes basic cute girls drinking tea and giggling in some random anime seem like literary masterclass. Neither Raya nor the Korra spawn have any personality to grasp aside from teenage girl. And they are totally besties after sharing a bowl of rice. How nice. Anyhow, in her infinite wisdom, which she probably gets from her father, Raya takes the Korra spawn to gander at the Dragon Ball. Just bask in its brilliance. She just waltzes in with a visitor like it's nothing. Are there no other guards? Is there seriously no one else watching over the Dragon Ball? Especially when all the other tribes are within shouting distance and still salivating for the Dragon Ball. Well, in case you are like me and your brain hasn't been replaced with stale skunk piss, then you'll probably see the knot twist coming a mile away. Of course, the Korra spawn betrays Raya and leads all her homies to the Dragon Ball. Dumb stuff ensues, everybody wants a taste of the Dragon Ball, Raya's dad continues his come on, let's be one huge family again shtick, because that worked so well before. In the commotion, the Dragon Ball falls to the ground and breaks. I didn't realize it was made of glass. And because the ball got crushed, the evil fart cloud suddenly manifests out of Satan's asshole once more. Everybody scatters, each tribe grabs a piece of the Dragon Ball to go, because it broke neatly into five little pieces, sure, and all hell and panic breaks loose. Raya's dad gets turned to stone, and it's sad and stuff. Except I don't care. Putting aside the stupidity and insufferable idealism, he isn't even dead. He's turned to stone. This is a Disney movie, and a modern Disney movie at that. He is coming back. So now that there's nothing to protect the useless humans from the fart clouds, the world is thrown into this post-apocalyptic-esque era. Except not really. The fart clouds have one big weakness. They can't cross water. Hmm. So now you are thinking that, okay, I see, everyone lives on islands and stuff. And you would be right. If this movie wasn't written by drooling mustard brains. No, no, everyone just lives close to water. You know, river shores and stuff. And the fart clouds just leave them be. They don't circle around them from the mainland or anything, they just leave the humans to be. Even though their only drive is to literally kill everything that moves. We skip ahead six years to find Raya scouring the desert for the last dragon. The one who allegedly made the Dragon Ball. You know, the one who disappeared inexplicably. Raya wants the dragon to make another Dragon Ball so that the fart clouds will fuck off. So Raya finds this temple hole thing and lo and behold the dragon appears out of thin air. The dragon has been missing for 500 years, and no one was able to find it in all that time. But Raya managed to check out the entire realm and found it in 6 years. What? And first off, the design of this fucking thing is utter horseshit. It looks like one of the bosses from Bloodborne had sex with a My Little Pony. Why the fuck does it have fur? It is supposed to be a water dragon. All the dragons in this universe are water dragons. These dragons should be scaly. Exclusively. There is no reason for it to have fur. Aside from that, the My Little Pony dragon is one of the most puke-inducing characters I've ever had the displeasure of witnessing. It never stops talking. It's one of those Olaf-type insufferable cringy pieces of shit comic reliefs, where the writer thinks that if the characters just keep ceaselessly talking and talking, then it eventually turns funny. Spoilers, it never does. It's just aggravating. The My Little Pony Dragon has no chemistry with any of the other characters. It just keeps babbling its stupid nothing dialogue, while the rest of the cast are just forced to stare at it, much like the audience. Why can't anyone at Disney write comedy anymore? I liked Mushu. Mushu was cool. In any case, it turns out that the My Little Pony Dragon wasn't actually the one who created the Dragon Ball after all. Dun dun dun, who the fuck cares? Rather, it was her brothers and sisters. Apparently, they made the gem, gave it to the My Little Pony Dragon, and then just died. Why the fuck didn't they use the Dragon Ball themselves? Answers? Logic? The fuck are those? Moving on. 
So the My Little Pony Dragon can't help anyone. Great, let's leave it here and move on. No? Oh, it can still fix the Dragon Ball, provided that Raya collects all the pieces. Yay, road trip! So the bulk of the movie is Raya and the My Little Pony Dragon going on these shitty mini-adventures across the realm collecting pieces of the Dragon Ball. All of them are increasing amounts of lame, dumb and pointless. Nothing is given enough time to feel impactful, there's no stakes, it's just this blur of random shite happening in a sequence. One of the chunks is inside this Indiana Jones Temple of Doom place, and it's done and dusted in a minute. I say a minute, but it feels like a goddamn hour because of the pony dragon just won't shut the hell up. I have no recollection what it was actually spewing from its dumb, idiotic, useless, dumb, fucking dumb mouth. It's just ear grating static and I fucking hate it. But yeah, Raya just strolls inside the trap infested place like it's nothing and snacks the shard so easily that I honestly blurted out that's it after the fact. The hunt for each of the Dragon Ball pieces is so easy that it makes me wonder how on earth has no one else collected them already. Mind you, Raya isn't the only one after the ball, so either everyone else in the universe are utterly retarded, or Raya is one of the most plot-favored pro tags in a good while. And because one shitty sidekick just isn't enough, Raya also meets new teammates along the way, who are all dull and annoying. Though never to the extent of the pony dragon fuck. She's the empress of shitty screen time. The cast grows to hold such innovative characters as... A generic kid operating a riverboat. A baby con artist with sidekick monkeys. What the fuck? And a Down Syndrome Viking. Sure, I can't wait to hang out with these characters in the next Kingdom Hearts game. Every single one of them is useless in the grand scheme of things. Yet they tag along for the adventure anyway. No character is given room for development or fleshing out. They all have the exact same fucking backstory. My family was wiped out by the fart clouds. Riveting. And as we already know, everyone who has been turned into stone will come back just as soon as the Dragon Ball is put back together. So there's absolutely no reason to feel sorry for any of these walking charisma voids. Every bad thing in the story will be undone by the end. It honestly doesn't even feel like a movie, but rather like a TV show cut together to resemble one. And each episode is filler. It's that special kind of wasted screen time. The action isn't exciting, the humor makes you physically wince, and the characters are so bland it makes you want to commit seppuku just to feel something. It reminds me eerily of The Rise of Skywalker. That's how bland it is. Stuff just happening. That's actually an apt comparison, considering the main villain of the movie. We have the Korra spawn all grown up, and just like Kylo Ben Solo before her, she too has zero charisma, no threatening presence, inconsistent motives, she's just shit all around. She chases Raya across the land, and the two clash a couple of times, and the movie wants to paint the two as some kind of epic rivals, but I honestly couldn't give two shits about their relationship. There's nothing interesting going on here. Coraspawn is just a selfish cunt who once pretended to be friends with Raya, and Raya herself is just a bland hero. That's it. The conflict doesn't even make any sense in the first place. Raya is trying to rid the world of the fart clouds, and the villains are all like, Nah, give me the Dragon Ball, I wanna do stuff with it instead. What exactly are the abilities of the Dragon Ball? That is never fully explained. Does it actually breathe life to the land or something? The tribe of the Coraspawn seems to be thriving after holding on to one of the shards for six whole years, so maybe? In any case, you'd think that everyone would be on board with nuking the fart cloud so that the not post-apocalypse can end. But I guess not. If everyone had functioning brains and a healthy sense of self-preservation, then the movie wouldn't happen now, would it? But the plot doesn't matter. Because the purpose of modern tales isn't entertaining the audience, or offering narratives with stakes and payoffs. No, no, no. It's all about the themes. And what theme has this film chosen to slap onto itself to justify its existence? Well, that would be trust. See, the movie pretends like Raya has some kind of lesson to learn when it comes to trusting others. The My Little Pony Dragon is all like, You should trust people more, Raya! 
And Raya is all like, fuck that noise, people are dicks. And she is absolutely right. No kidding, every single person Raya meets on her journey, even her so-called friends, try to fuck her over in some way. The little kid on the riverboat, he offers his help for money. The baby con artist and the monkeys, they literally tried to rob Raya. The stupid viking guy, he captured Raya and was planning to do who knows what with her, but was too mentally challenged to go through with it. Not to mention all the shit with the Koraspawn and her tribe. It's fucking hilarious to think that this movie tries to tell its audience to be more trusting of others, when all the events of the movie give the exact opposite message. Most people in the film's universe are selfish, vindictive bastards. They don't deserve anyone's trust. And there is certainly no way that such hateful and greedy people could ever come together as a single tribe. The funniest example comes right at the end of the film. So the My Little Pony Dragon convinces Raya to approach Koraspawn as a friend and just ask for the final piece of the Dragon Ball. Why the fuck would Raya do that? And why the fuck would Koraspawn agree? The two have never been actual friends. It was always just a ruse. Did the writers forget their own story thus far? I can't exactly blame them, but still. Anyway, they meet up as planned, and can you imagine my lack of surprise when Koraspawn double crosses Raya, again, points her with a crossbow, and demands that she give her all the pieces instead? So that's a roaring laughter moment right there. Yeah, sure, trust others blindly, even when they've done nothing but lie and cheat and try to literally kill you. Nothing bad will happen if you trust them. And not only that, not only that, but the My Little Pony Dragon also gets killed as Koraspawn accidentally misfires her crossbow. You bet I was cheering at that. The greatest joy this movie gave me was seeing that stupid Blaffermouth finally shut the hell up. And then I burst out crying because I realized I was watching a Disney movie. So there was 0% chance that the dragon was actually dead for good. Then we have the climax of the film. After the last dragon is dead at last, the rivers of the land suddenly dry out, for some reason. With nothing to stop them, the fart clouds have an extra spicy temper tantrum and decide to advance on everyone, starting from the tribe of the Koraspawn. Oh no, I'm so worried for everyone's safety, especially the literal cheating villains. While this is happening, Raya has a bitch fit about the death of the My Little Pony Dragon. She marches to meet Koraspawn all badass and angry. The film has all these ridiculous angsty shots of her being all Anakin Skywalker going Old Republic on some younglings. She is pissed now, and she's totally gonna kill Koraspawn. Good, that's what she should have done already. Meanwhile, Koraspawn is angsty because the fart clouds turned her mom into stone. Ooh, she's pissed too. Time for an epic final showdown. Cunt versus Bland. Let's go. And so they do. There's nothing else to say. They just fight. And out of all the things the Koraspawn could possibly say in this situation, she starts blaming Raya for all the misery. No, seriously. She says, and I quote, you didn't trust her. That's why we are here. You are as much to blame for the My Little Pony Dragon's death as I am. How the fuck is any of this Raya's fault? You were the one who lied and cheated and betrayed and literally killed the dragon, you stupid worthless cunt. Shut your dumbass mouth and just die already. But then Raya is all like, oh shit, you're right. And stops killing the cunt. Wh what? Holy fuck, this movie is stupid. And that's not even the best part yet. At the end, all the dumb and annoying characters come to fight the fart clouds with the help of the Dragon Ball pieces. It's still in shambles, so it ain't doing much good. But then Raya realizes a great truth. All of them need to trust each other, so that the Dragon Ball can be made whole again. Yeah, sure, why not? It's magic. It can work whatever the way you want to. At this point I had already checked out completely. I was just hoping the shit show would end already. So the method to prove that the characters all trust one another and the bullshit plot magic can activate is this. All of them give their pieces to the literal villain who murdered one of their own and allow the fart clouds to turn them all into stone. 
I'm sorry, but that's not called trust. That's just fatal stupidity. And what a great message. Trust means committing suicide in front of others and hoping you get resurrected. Fuck you, Disney. Fuck you. But yeah, the Korra spawn puts the Dragon Ball back together and the fart clouds die. And everyone comes back to life and the My Little Pony dragon is back too. And all the other dragons come back to life too for some reason. I don't know. I don't care. This movie was awful. Let's just fucking let it end. And at the final, final scene of the film, Raya meets up with her dad who is alive and well just like everyone else. And as an added bonus, all the people of the land are suddenly friends with one another. Because that's realistic, I guess. There's no bad blood, no one blames one another, no one is greedy anymore, assholes just cease to exist anywhere. Everyone will be pure and altruistic from now on. What even was this movie? So yeah, if it wasn't clear from my ramblings already, every minute of this experience was just misery. There's so much wrong with the story, I didn't even touch on all the stupidity and plot holes yet. This film is honestly not even worth it. Do not watch it, it's horrid. There's nothing of value here. The plot is nonsensical, the characters are infuriatingly lame, and the morals range from disgustingly naive to just plain disgusting. The Disney Corporation has no idea what they are doing these days. They, and all their modern shit, should be treated as such and flushed down the toilet never to be seen again. And to anyone calling this movie any good, go stick your head inside a plane turbine. Your opinions are worthless, you are laughably inept as critics, and you should be ashamed of yourselves. Accepting this kind of trash tier storytelling and horrid messages is only gonna lower standards even further, if that's even possible at this point. In any case, that's all I had to say. Leave a like and subscribe if you wish to hear more ramblings such as this in the future. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.